Back in the early days of the Christie administration, the Republican governor unveiled a toolkit intended to give municipalities a way to control property taxes. Included in that kit was a 2% cap on public employee salary increases, salary arbitration awards, and on local tax increases. The new Democratic governor allowed the salaries and arbitration award limits to expire last year. The 2% limits on local tax increases, however, was permanent, and that has created the potential for budget imbalances, which brought together a hearing room full of municipal financial officers to figure out what the new landscape will look like for negotiations with public employee unions. Senator Declan O'Scanlan was a keynote speaker. Caps are really an insult to good county and local elected officials, responsible, right? If you're doing your job, you don't need a cap. They also punish folks that have run their governments efficiently before a cap is inflicted on you. If you got a lot of fat in your budget and you were doing a crappy job, a cap doesn't hurt you all that much. You can go years because you got a lot of fat left in your, in your budget. If you've been responsible at the time we place a cap on you, sorry, you're, you're being punished for your previous uh, responsibility. The problem, according to this room full of the management side of labor relations, is that without the caps on salaries and arbitration awards, the unions will be emboldened, confident that their demands will more likely be met by an arbitrator than by municipal managers. One of the topics that came up was about asking for substantial increases and as a matter of fact, going to the table and demanding substantial increases and going to the table prepared by scrubbing municipal budgets, by looking for where there is money that is available so that it's not necessarily burdening the taxpayers, but going in and demanding money from your budgets and from your balance sheets from places like reserves that have been built over time. The real wild card in labor relations going forward is the elimination of Chapter 78, which increased the amount union workers have to pay towards their health coverage. That number is now open to negotiations on the local level, much to the consternation of local management. We cannot predict. If I go to, to, to the CFO, John Reinhart, and said, I, I settled the contract at 3% inclusive of increment, can you cost that out for the next three years? He can cost that out. He can budget for it, he can understand it. But if I say, uh, John, I just reduced the Chapter 78 top tier from 35 to 26%, cost that out. How do you cost that out? You don't know where health benefits are going to go. Every year they go up 10 percent, sometimes they go up zero, the next year they go up 20 percent. It won't come as a shock to anyone, but the police union, the PBA, says that management is less interested in good labor relations and more interested in eliminating benefits and requiring more from workers. We've made such changes in our health benefit system and made so many concessions, not just Chapter 78 payment, not that we're paying a third as law enforcement, but, but just the, 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 the lower level of benefit that our members are taking day to day. In the end, all this stuff, interest arbitration caps, salaries, who wins, who loses matters to you because come tax time, the person who foots the bill for all this is you. In Trenton, I'm David Cruz. NJTV News.